For over 3,000 years, a story has lain hidden beneath the sands of Egypt. A story we are only now beginning to reclaim. It is a story of a time we call the New Kingdom. It left us the greatest treasures of the ancient world, an extraordinary legacy in papyrus, stone, and gold. But behind these treasures lies an epic tale of real people. For over 3,000 years, Egypt was ruled by pharaohs. But in that vast sweep of time, one pharaoh stands out. He would reign for 67 years, command the largest empire on earth, and capture the imagination of the world. His name was Ramesses. Ramesses built a reputation that has resounded through history. It was a reputation deliberately crafted by the Pharaoh himself. Ramesses was in fact a master of propaganda, projecting his power beyond the battlefield across the ancient world. This is the story of how one man created his own legend. For over 3,000 years, a story has lain hidden beneath the sands of Egypt. A story we are only now beginning to reclaim. It is a story of a time we call the New Kingdom. It left us the greatest treasures of the ancient world, an extraordinary legacy in papyrus, stone, and gold. But behind these treasures lies an epic tale of real people. By the time Ramesses was in his 40s, his tomb had been finished for several years. With the average Egyptian life expectancy at around 35 years, Ramesses must have known that he was already living on borrowed time. He focused his attention on securing his legacy, siring children to succeed him on the Golden Throne. As well as his chief wife, Nefertari, Ramesses had a number of minor wives in his harem. He even married three of his own daughters. In his inscriptions, he boasts of something like 80 sons and something like 60 daughters, although the number of daughters is about a lot vaguer than the number of sons. But he boasts of a huge offspring, and he's rather like one of those modern dictators who are known as father of their country, in many cases literally. Confident that he had produced an heir, Ramesses turned with renewed vigor to his building program. Soon the Nile Valley began to overflow with monuments dedicated to Egypt's greatest king. When Ramesses builds, he builds big. It is enormous. It's on a scale that has never really been seen in Egypt. Everywhere, 
Ramesses' title could be seen carved into rock. Hieroglyphs that read, Ruler of Rulers. Practically every town in Egypt gets its temple either rebuilt or refounded or revamped. Ramesses isn't modest. If he sees a rather nice monument, let's say an obelisk, put up by a previous king, he puts his own names all over the obelisk as well. Where great temples already existed, such as here at Luxor, Ramesses simply erected a new entrance with four statues of himself to claim the temple as his own. Karnak, Egypt's holiest temple, all the pharaohs of the new kingdom had built monuments. But Ramesses soon outdid them all. In the great hypostyle hall begun by his grandfather, Ramesses ordered a work of awesome proportions. An army of artisans carved a field of 134 columns in the shape of papyrus. Each column stood 69 feet tall, 6 feet wide, and weighed over 100 tons. The Greeks, the Romans, even Napoleon would one day attempt to emulate its grandeur.